the, the basic feel of the project, as you heard, what was uh, from Alex was that we were weighing the universe, and uh, Rich's uh, you know idea uh, was that if you can measure how much the universe is slowing down. Uh, that, that will tell you um, how much stuff there is in the universe. And in particular, we were interested in how much it was slowing down, uh, with the idea being that if it's slowing enough, it could come to a halt and collapse. And there, the universe could actually have an end. And this seemed like a really good project to do just you know, in the decade before the millennium, because we thought we could walk around carrying the signs, you know, the universe is coming to an end, <laughs> perhaps, or the other way around. And uh, we also know the speed of light. So if it's farther away, you know that's farther back in time. And each supernova then, just by its brightness, would tell you um, what date it exploded. Each supernova also is telling you something else about the expansion of the universe. As the light's traveling to you in an expanding universe, anything that's not nailed down stretches with the universe. And that includes the wavelength of light of the, of the supernova. So what we ended up doing was just collecting a, a series of supernovas. The two teams had, had a supernova at a range of different um, distances. And so they represented a range of different times back in history. And we could just look up from this redshift, the color, um, how much the universe had stretched since that time. And of course, what we found um, when the two groups uh, looked at their data separately was that um, the universe appears to be not doing what we expected. It was actually speeding up um, in its expansion in the most recent 7 billion years that we were studying. The, the environment that people were talking about at LDL and Rich's group really fostered the ideas of starting such a project uh, with Rich and Carl. And really, it was the work of Saul that put it all together and was able to find the first supernova and actually start generating a lot of these supernova. Today, earlier, there was a press conference at LVL, and uh, afterwards, a reporter came up to me and asked me uh, about Saul. You know, what was my, from my experience working with him, what did I learn about um, being a great scientist? And my belief is that there's actually many ways to be a great scientist, and I think we see many, on uh, this panel, many ways of being a great scientist. But for Saul, I think uh, my answer was that his optimism. It's never in my life that I think I'd be so fundamentally involved in such an exciting breakthrough. Um, thank you, Saul, for bringing me into the team in the early 1990s, and I hope that having both teams in your mind and that the I, the mind of the Supernova Cosmology Project really did lead to uh, an acceleration of the progress and an improvement in the quality of the work. Thank you. It's the optimism and persistence, I think, that maybe the um, optimism helps drive the persistence, and that's how we get things done, working with Saul. Um, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun for you, Saul, because uh, maybe, unlike some people, you might worry uh, it would go to their head. We know what a humble person you are, and uh, that you're going to have a lot of fun really uh, leveraging this uh, in helping everybody really appreciate science and the quest for discovery.